all your you can't even see the end of it Hassan. People what a great us. crowd thank you very much hello wisconsin we're back we're back we're gonna win we're gonna win this state we win this oh, state you know what it's man, over Hassan. we win wisconsin i've treated wisconsin very well four days from now we're going to win this state and we are going to win Four more beautiful Hassan. years. I love you, I love you. With your support, we will continue to bring back your jobs, cut your taxes, cut regulations, support our great police. Oh, you're such a big defend our man, borders. Hassan. Without borders, we don't have a country, do we? Protect our Second Amendment, protect religious liberty, and ensure more products are proudly stamped oh, with those beautiful man, words. Hassan. Your ads spam you neuronically the made me resubscribe just to save me from it. My man, my man is protecting the beautiful borders of Wisconsin, dude. The words, Merry Christmas, we did, right? Merry Christmas. Those big department stores, they like Happy New Year. Muslim. No, you can say them And both, Mexicans. You can't and Mexican Muslims. Without the other. Merry Christmas is back. You notice that, right? Bitch, your wife literally said... Some shit that would the Grinch wouldn't be on board with. You're this is so funny. Like that would have been a, a massive story in any other election cycle. But like you can't do the war on Christmas narrative ever. Like your wife literally was like, I don't like Christmas. Fuck. Fuck Christmas. I don't like it. I don't know why. Private health care. 180 million people have private health care. They want to take it away and send your state oh, you're into a, a catastrophic hospital you want to use the word recession or depression because the word is depression biden has vowed to eliminate the entire u.s oil industry no fracking no energy and gas prices going five six seven dollars for a gallon how do you like two dollar gasoline good There'll be no heating in the winter, no air conditioning in the summer, and no electricity, whatever the hell you want it. Right now, you have it made. You're so lucky. You are so lucky I'm your president. And your team's doing a good job, right? They're doing a good job, right? They're doing a good job. And while I'm president, America will proudly remain energy independent. How does that sound? First time. You're energy independent. We're the biggest in the world. Nobody close. Biden will deliver poverty, misery, depression. I will deliver jobs, 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 and the greatest economy in the history of our country. That's going to be next year. You see it. Yesterday, it was announced last quarter our economy grew at the astonishing speed, 33.1%, the largest GDP growth ever recorded, and not just by a little bit, by more than double. Right? And that was in 1952, but more than double. Think of it. It's uh, never been anything like that for any country, not only ours, for any country. In the past five months, we've created a record 11.4 million American jobs. We have a Super V. I used to talk about the V. This is, a this is no longer a V. This Herbert. is a Super Two V. This is despite the fact that the Democrat governors have states shut down, right? Gee, does that sound... Hey, does that sound familiar to you? <laughs> Middle-class family income is up more than $6,000 under my administration, far greater than the past administration. I mean, that was not up. That was doing very poorly. We created the greatest economy in history, and now we're doing it again. Make America great again, again. We did it once. That hat, see, that hat is now obsolete. It's called Make America Great Again, Again. In a very recent poll, Gallup, they said 56% of Americans said they were doing better today than they were four years ago. And we're rounding the turn on a pandemic, and it's 56, and it's the highest number they've ever recorded. So we're doing something right. <laughs> Joe Biden spent the last 47 years outsourcing your jobs, opening your borders, and sacrificing American blood and treasure in endless 
foreign wars in countries that most of when inflation is factored in Americans are earning only 2.7 more 2.7 percent more than they did uh, in 1999 Joe why didn't you do it Joe that was an easy debate 91 percent to nine percent they said that was good that's like that's like a great football game no I said but Joe I said, Joe, why didn't you do it? Uh, well, I, I don't... Also, the, the part that he's talking about with, like, American income, middle-class income uh, rising. Where American income is, like, rising, he's actually referencing old data from 2019. I don't know what the new data is, but last time he said that, that was in 2019. This is a pleasure. Uh, this is a pleasure. That was cold. I said, let's cut this a uh, little bit shorter. But we have a big crowd. You know, we had a big crowd no matter where we go. We have these massive crowds. And I'm going up. I'm going up to Minnesota. We're going to Minnesota, which we have a chance. Not since 1972. Think of it. So, so those are odds that aren't good. But they like us up there with the Iron Range, all the things I've done for them up there, and helping them when the rioters and anarchists attacked. We took over and we did a great job, but they should have called us two weeks earlier, in all fairness. If they called, if they called us, federal government, if they called us two weeks earlier, that would have been nice, you know? You would have had no problem. It took us about, what, 25 minutes to solve the problem, right? <laughs> Boom. They just this marched out. But we're going in. The governor just informed us, though, that... So we have 25,000 people. 25,000 people. That's a lot. You got a lot here. 25,000 people in Minnesota. They said, we can only have 250 people. So they were hoping I'd say, oh, well, we can't do that. Let's turn around. No, we're going to go. We're going to go. Be a very interesting trip. Even if we see 250 people, can I be honest with you? Everybody understands. You can't play those games. That could very well, aside from, aside from Omar, Omar is our secret weapon. Ilhan Omar, that's our secret weapon in Minnesota. Ilhan Omar is so fucking popular. She has a 35 point lead. And the other, and you know all about this because you've had your things. The other is we want law and order. We got to have law and order. You look at what's going on in Philadelphia, you can't have that. You have to let the police do what they do. I mean, they have to do their job. When I watch that, again, Democrats, it's all Democrats. When I watch that, and people are looting stores, and you have the anarchists, the rioters, but they're looting stores. They're walking out with dishwashers. They're walking out. This guy has a dishwasher. He couldn't even be pushing it. They're washing. I mean, they have television sets, and they're walking, and the police are standing there. And those police don't want to be standing there. They don't want to do that. They want to be able to do their job, but they're not. And you can't have that. We need oh, you're law such a big and order. Man. As we had as we had right here. As we did a very good job right here. We got the endorsement of everybody. Everybody in your state, every law enforcement group in your this state endorsed us. Perfect. Every law I think every law enforcement group in the country endorsed us. I asked uh, Sleepy Joe during one of the debates, I said, Joe. You know what? Joe. I like that he admits this stuff at least so that maybe people will recognize that cops are just notoriously always pro-Republican. They've always been Republican. They always vote Republican in like insanely overwhelming numbers. I doubt he has any. I doubt he has any. I think we have everybody. We have everybody. Florida, Texas, Oklahoma, Chicago endorses. Isn't that nice? Chicago. With all the problems. With all the problems they have. This those, is false, they have, great, though? they have a great group of people from law enforcement. According to a police magazine study, uh, law enforcement officers voted or said they were voting for Donald Trump at 84%. Okay? 84% of law enforcement officers said that they were going to vote for Donald Trump in 2016. You understand? Over Hillary Clinton. And by the way, the other part of that Okay, the 14% or 16% did not say that they were going to vote for Hillary Clinton. 7% of that also said they would vote for Gary Johnson. So, 
if you think that like law enforcement historically has not voted for Republicans, like even with Mitt great. Romney, it was like 74% or something. Deal ever made and China's entry into the World Trade Organization, which cost Wisconsin 130 minimum manufacturing jobs. At every turn, Biden betrayed American workers and twisted his Dude, knife. Stop sending me this fucking 52 minute Vic Burger video, man. What do you got, a burger brain? I'm not going to watch a 52 minute Vic Burger compilation of Donald Trump. Stop. Devastated black families. I love Vic. With the 19 I love Vic. I think he's great, but like, I can't watch a 52 minute compilation. Youth super predators, a term that's a terrible term. Super predators over and over again. And then he wonders why they're not doing well with the black vote. You know, the black vote's not turning out for him. See, now we don't have to go by the fake polls. Now you see what's happening. He's not doing well with the black vote. You know why? Because they remember that. And they remember 1994. And they remember him calling everybody a super predator. And that's a term that... Okay, but they also remember 2020 when you literally said when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Or they remember yesterday when you said Cory Booker is going to uh, bring unfavorable people into your towns with uh, low-income housing they're going to build in the suburbs. Like, does he think black people are too fucking stupid to recognize what that means? Like, I mean, this is why all this shit is not for the black people, okay? That's why his campaign strategy for black people is very different when he's actually in their neighborhoods, in like, uh, you know, Blacks for Trump or whatever kind of fucking group that they've launched. This is just his for white people, okay? When he says he's the best uh, for black people since, uh, he's the best president for black people since Abraham Lincoln, He's not talking to black people there. He's talking to white people, okay? Just like when Candace Owens doesn't talk to black people. Candace Owens me. isn't there to, like, change black yeah. people's minds. Candace Owens is there to fucking make racist white people feel more comfortable about their racism. That's interesting. And then His the fake Washington Hassan. Post, ABC, right? Did you see that? So we are, Todd. I was up here two days ago. We gave a great speech. That was a cold one. We gave a speech on a racetrack. We got a lot of people, and it was freezing, but I got through that. I was, there was no way that I leave early or the great people of Wisconsin, because you don't, you don't know about that. There was no way. Anyway, this fall, so we're tied. Let's say we're tied. One up, one down. We're right, boom. Very close. I think we're going to take it easily, actually. I think we're going to take it in, because we're going to have a turnout, probably on Tuesday. You know, our people like to vote. They like to vote on Tuesday, not even on Sunday or Monday. But it's one of, so Washington Post and ABC, it's called Washington Post, ABC poll. This is they come out 17 point. down. Donald Trump is 17 down in Wisconsin. I said, I said, wait a minute. I just left the crowd of 25,000 people or more. They were going crazy. That wasn't a second place crowd. You know, we know a second place crowd. That was not a second place crowd. The they Chicago, the Chicago police chief is a QAnon supporter. Well, we know that the uh, the New York one is. I don't know if the Chicago one is too. Washington Post, ABC, crooked as hell. It's called suppression polls. You know what it does? It suppresses the vote. You get depressed. You like Trump. You know, I like the president, but let's, uh, and in the case four years ago, I like Donald Trump. He's going to do a good job. We did more than we said we were going to do. We did more than any administration. <laughs> Has ever done in the first three and a half years. But it's a suppression thing. So they came out 12 down. We actually wrote them legal letters and everything, and then they changed the vote. Can you believe it? They changed it. Well, we were range. one down. Perfect. But that was the day before the election. Two weeks to go, 12 down. But this one was 17 down in your state. And I said, you know, I could be three down. I could also be three up. I could be three down, I could be four down, I could also be three up or four up. One thing I know, I'm not 17 down. So, oh, the head of the so I called order. up the best pollster. Oh, the head of the police union uh, is a QAnon supporter. Okay, got it. That makes sense. Of course he is. I just left Wisconsin. They're so we dumb, dude. We had a tremendous dude. crowd. It was like a love fest. And then I, I wake up, true, and then I wake up uh, uh, like two days later, 
and I see a poll. Washington Post, it's all over the place. You know, they love it, all the fake news. Look at all of them back. They're fake. <laughs> Among the most dishonest people in the world. Now they have a new thing, they don't report. They don't report on, you know, criminality like with the Biden crime family, you know, they don't want to report. But fortunately, we have guys like Ron Johnson that are willing to <laughs> say it like it is. It's actually very true what I just said. He's fantastic, but we'll get to him later. Your senator is fantastic. So you take a look, and I said, I'm not 17 now. And he's a really smart guy. He says, no, you're not. I said, but don't they have to pay a price like, you know, they did it 12 down four years ago and now said, isn't it a bad thing? He said, yeah, but they want you to lose. I said, well, why don't they make it that I'm three down or two down or, you know, make it like believable. No, no, three down or two down is no good. Because if they go three down, two down, four, even five, I said, make it five. He said, no, no good. Because that means you have a chance. That might even bring people out. They want to make it so bad. And they said, no, they're very smart people. They're very vicious people. And they purposely make these polls phony. They're phony polls. And he said, the only way they really can do it, they have to make it so that the people here think you're 17 down and they don't go and vote because they say it's hopeless. Five down, four down, three down means, gee, he has a chance. 17 down means, darling, let's go to dinner. Let's have a wonderful dinner. And then watch come, we'll come home and watch the president lose. But we're not going to lose. We're going to win. We're going to win. True. True story. Isn't that some story? Isn't that sad? Listen, man, if they were that confident they were going to win, they wouldn't be fucking actively trying to suppress the vote or purge additional votes by, one, making it harder for those votes to ever, the votes that were cast and postmarked before November 3rd to arrive at uh, commissioner's offices and then simultaneously purge those votes by uh, a Supreme Court or federal court uh, decision. Like, if they were so confident, if this motherfucker was so confident about His name the leads that he Hassan. actually has, despite the fact that, you know, Wisconsin is, uh, Wisconsin is showing a giant swing for Biden. They wouldn't be doing all this shit. And that includes big tech. So Dude, you know like, what they're I'm so doing, stupid. I'm like, it's just, it just sucks. Like, Republicans are so fucking delusional, dude. His name is They're Hassan. so fucking delusional. Like... The entire policy of the Republican Party revolves around literally hurting the people be directly behind Donald Trump. Like, completely, like, their, their election policy revolves around making sure that as many people don't vote as possible, like, stopping as many people as possible from voting. Their entire campaign, all of their campaign promises are built on lies, like, the border wall is going to fix your His economy. No, it won't. Hassan. Tax cuts are going to help you. No, they don't. It's just all fucking silly shit. And Democrats lie too. Of course Democrats lie. All right? Oh my God, there's a cheese head back there. There's a MAGA cheese head. Of course Democrats lie as well. His name is Hassan. Right? But at least Democrats Hassan. make it seem like they give a shit Hassan. about you. Or at least like they make it seem like they give a shit about the policies that they inevitably never end up advocating for when they actually have any sort of power. But, like, at least those policies are good. Me for making a phone call. No, I make a phone call to a man I never met, the president, the new president of Ukraine. Congratulations, congratulations. It was a perfect phone call. Everybody said it. 297 to nothing in the House, the Republicans voted. Right? So you'd rather them it's lie like and pretend they care? Congratulations. I mean, Republicans lie, too. Republicans lie about how their policies are going to help people. And then they actually end up implementing those policies. And those policies are very harmful to the overall population. Range, mm, pervert. Democrats Alec, lie Alec, about Alec, policies Alec, that Alec, will Alec, actually help people, but they lie about the fact that they'll actually implement it. Do you see what I'm saying? Phone call. But they didn't know we had the call essentially recorded. Thank goodness we had, because they were making up stories, right? They died when they heard we had it transcribed by very professional people. They died. Because it had already been way down the track the by the time they found that out. I had to do that. We called up. We said, do you mind if we put your phone call on public record? They said, why would that be? It was just a congratulatory call. I said, well, you'll find out. These are bad people. So here's what we have. 
We have the Democrats. Now we have big tech. Now, we also have the rhinos. Now, the rhinos, in many ways, are worse than all of them. I hate the and, rhinos, And most too. of the rhinos I beat because, you know, they were all representing one of the 17 because we had 18 running. But they were who, most of whom I get along with. Some of them I don't like. I could tell you the good ones or the bad ones. But I beat all of these guys. And they end up being rhinos and bad people. And here we are. And we're president. We're going to have, I think we're going to have something that's even better than what we did four years ago. I really believe that. I really believe that. Because you don't have crowds like this and be on the losing stick. You know, you leave here and you say, gee, that doesn't sound like a second place. You can't even see the end of the crowd. That doesn't look like a second oh, place finisher. A man, uh, so when you hear about suppression, you have some very nice people up there, about two of them. But when you hear about, <laughs> when you hear about, when you hear about, that's right. I know every one of them. There. Some of them are great, actually. Uh, but we're going to have a big victory. And this election is the most important election of our lifetime. This is a more important election than the last one. And I never thought I'd say it, because they have gone so far radical left that we have to make this final step. And we're going to have — we're going to be normalizing our country, really normalizing our country. And you know what else normalizes its success? I'll tell you, before the, the plague came in from China, they should have never let it happen. But before the plague came in from China, I was getting calls from people that you would least expect. It was time. We had the best numbers, the best employment, the best everything. The stock market all time high. Everything was the best. And they were like, let's talk. And it was happening. And then we got hit with the plague. Success brings this country together. And we're going to have — we're going to have success next year. We're going to have success next year. You know, the most successful year Wisconsin ever had was last year. You're going to have a year — I mean, unless some guy gets in that wants to quadruple your taxes, which he wants to do. Yeah, He's the totally. only guy I've ever seen. We will raise like everyone. Everyone in Wisconsin is making 400 sure. racks, dude, a year. So Wisconsin, the wealthiest state on the planet, actually. Fun fact, every single person in Wisconsin makes $400,000 plus. This corrupt political establishment. All of those people. And you elected an outsider as president who is finally putting America first. If I don't sound like a typical politician, it's because I'm not a politician, if that's okay. And if I don't always play by the rules of Washington and the Washington establishment, it's because I was elected to fight for you, and I fight harder for you than any president at any time in the history of our country. A rhino is a Republican in name only. They're like the never Trump Republicans and shit. Um, someone said, oh, still voting Trump? Dude, that's so sick. Yo, please. Please vote extra hard for... Brother, we love it. We love it around these parts when people very openly, clearly showcase their idiocy, okay? We love it. You are welcome here, sir. If you're very openly going, nope, doesn't matter. I don't care that he's fucking me. I'm still voting for him. We welcome you here. We will pet you all day. Understand? You will get pet. Somehow it doesn't work for us, right? We can't do that, right? Look at him. He goes, no way, you can't do it. Now we appreciate it. It is. It's a chant that nobody's ever heard before. It's a, it, it started happening like uh, six weeks ago, and I said, man, that's very unusual. But it's a beautiful chant, and I appreciate it. I'm not just running against sleepy Joe Biden. I'm running against the left-wing media, the big tech giants, and the Washington swamp. And it's deep and vicious. And they can't believe what's happening. They can't believe it. They would have taken most people this out. Almost anybody would have been taken that's, that's out. And I have been helped a lot by that man right there named Ron Johnson. I have. He's a I tough watched guy the Jordan Clipper video guy. yesterday. And I knew it earlier than anybody else. I watched else. it last I night. It. I had a meeting with Ron Johnson, and we were going over a very complex tax. Most people had no idea what we were even talking about. He understood it so good. I mean, so I, he really understood it. So I knew a long time ago what you had. Don't lose him. Don't ever lose him. You need to show up. 
in record numbers and deliver a blistering defeat to these corrupt forces, and they are corrupt as hell. They're trying to take over our country, and we caught them. They're coming for your guns, they're coming for your jobs, and they're coming for your freedom. If you think about it. Your vote will stop them on November 3rd. Get out there, you got to vote. It's the most important issue, one of the most truly important issues. It's You don't like to even mention it, but it's law and order. And I mentioned that to Biden during one of the debates. I said, hey, Joe, say the words law and order. Can you do it? He wouldn't do it because he didn't want to lose the radical left. He didn't want to lose them. Joe Biden and his party have spent the entire year inciting violence and hatred against our police officers. And he refuses to say, you got to stop it. You cannot run through Portland to destroy the city. I mean, it's been going on. We could stop it in 30 minutes. You know, in Seattle, I said, I don't care. We waited and waited. The governor never called. We waited. We're supposed to, I said, you got to go. And they took over a part of the city. I mean, this is even to even talk about this. Who would think of this Seattle? And we were going in and we told them we're coming in in the morning. And you know what they did that evening? They raised their hand and they left. That was the end of it. And a lot of people are paying a big price, by the way. But they raised their hands and they left. Or the statues. We signed a law. You knock down statues. They were knocking down statues all over the country. You knock down statues, you go to jail for 10 years. It's an old law. Sick, dude. That's such a... That's so, that's necessary legislation. You know what I mean? Like, in a time of crisis, in a time of economic crisis, followed by a disastrous coronavirus plan, when a thousand people are dying a day again, when every three days we got a new 9-11, at that point, I think the people, what they really want is some legislation that will lock more people up for fucking defacing a Confederate monument. That's, that's what we're looking for, dude. This, I want a president that has his priorities in order. I mean, how pathetically privileged do you got to be to be like, yep, that's it. That's my president. It's good shit. Monument. They want it renamed or taken down. This was their recommendation. Don't worry about it. We're not his doing name it. is I Hassan. Promise you. They don't like the Thomas Jefferson Memorial because they don't like it. They don't even know why. Tell me why. And they don't like even the Lincoln Memorial, right? <laughs> they don't like the Lincoln. So they wanted uh, recommendations to change the name or take them down. And I said, I think this commission should be immediately disbanded because it's not going anywhere. It'd be but immediately are, disbanded. Uh, this is a fact. Take down the Washington Monument. These people are stone cold crazy. You have to go out and you have to vote. Biden stands with the rioters and looters, and Biden wouldn't say anything about the report. They asked him about the report. He didn't want to come. I have no comment. Do you want to take down the Washington Monument, sir? I have no comment on that. Ay, 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 he has no clue. He never had much of a clue. Now we know he. I stand with the heroes of law enforcement. These are great people, and we have to help them. If Biden wins, the rioters and the streets, they'll be running your federal government. They'll be running your government. No city, no family, and no community will be safe. The Biden-Harris, how about Harris? Kamala. Kamala. And you have to say her name right or she gets very upset, right? Even though she doesn't say it right. Come on, come on, come on. That's racist as fuck. That's racist as fuck. Harris plan would end cash bail releasing. Dude, that's racist as fuck, dude. You're 100%. Everybody knows. Everybody knows what he's doing there, okay? Everyone knows what the fuck he's doing. When you purposefully, knowingly, full-blown do that shit, you're like... You're 100% doing it on purpose. Like, oh, yeah, come on. You know, Kamala, she gets so mad. She's so unreasonable. Know your fucking place. Know your place in society, of course. This is not a country for people named Kamala. We're going to fucking say it wrong from time to time. And there's a lot of people in that crowd that always, that also fucking feel that way, too, where they're like, yeah, yeah, damn right. Why are you getting so mad anyway? Meanwhile, you say... AR stands for fucking assault rifle 15. They will literally genocide. What the fuck are you talking about? It's it stands for arm a lot, motherfucker. Stop calling it a clip. It's a magazine.
But like a person's name is just like uh, completely unimportant. It's like, huh, come on. Who gives a shit? Know your fucking place. Like they did in Minneapolis. And then we went in and it took place very quickly. Like usually if it takes like more than a half an hour to wipe the whole thing out, I say you're not doing a very good job. Biden's running mate, the most liberal senator in America, even urged their supporters to donate to a fund that bailed out the rioters, took them right out of jail, including a cop killer or an That is you stretching too much, bro. When did he say that about belonging or play stuff? It was just a joke. Dude, when you make a joke like that, it's deliberate. Don't be a fucking deeply. idiot. It's 100% deliberate. And that's the sentiment. I'm not saying he says Kamala doesn't belong here in this country. I'm saying the sentiment behind making fun of someone's uh, foreigner, like foreign sounding name and the anger that they demonstrate for you very purposefully incorrectly stating what their fucking name is and making it seem like that anger is misplaced is totally coming from a place of a white supremacist attitude, having a white supremacist attitude. You all, some of you at least, have fucking worked in actual in the professional workplace. You all know there's a fucking white boomer dipshit like that, okay, in the workplace that does that exact same thing. Oftentimes that white boomer dipshit isn't running for president, so he's not as deliberately doing that where he just thinks he's being funny, where he's like, ha, you know that, that new tech guy? What's his name? Ha, <laughs> Gupta? Gooper? I don't know. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Like, that guy is being a piece of shit. Okay, that guy's been a piece of shit, but he's probably your fucking superior or supervisor or whatever. You know what I mean? In your workplace, so you can't fucking say anything to that guy, right? But like, that's precisely who uh, wow, Donald Trump is amazing. channeling the energy of and trying to shit over, or uh, shit on in a similar capacity. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're such a big man, Hassan. Love you has unless anyone who's worked in like a fucking workplace outside of, I guess, like marketing agencies in New York and shit has had a situation like that. That's incredibly fucking racist and awkward. OK, Donald Trump is signaling to those dudes and the motivation behind that kind of joke, even if one of them is like well-intentioned yet misguided shit. because Her. they're like kind of racist. This one is totally motivated by galvanizing those opinions that that person has. And it stems from white supremacist attitudes. Election. So let me tell you, if Biden was in charge of this vaccine, just like the swine flu, he was in charge of H1N1. It's right, like which childish, right. dude. It's it. literally fucking childish. It's like a, it's like a way that a child would make fun of someone, like in a racist way. It's almost like, it's almost like pure in that sense. Do you understand? Well, like when Alex Jones says his name is Hassan Pecker, huh? Can't make up that name. Like, what do you think he means? Hussan Pecker. It sort of was because we have therapeutics now that are incredible. In fact, here I am. I'm here. Right? <laughs> they gave me a shot. The Regeneron, it's called. And Is racist when Trump makes fun of Kamala's name? But it's not racist when you call French people pedophiles and say, fuck your culture? Are you butt hurt? I think you should take it up with uh, Foucault and, and maybe other, maybe other postmodernist French philosophers if you're upset about um, what I said about uh, pedophilia, even though it was a joke. Also, have I been oppressing the Francos here or something? The, the race of, of the, the race of His French? His name is Hassan. Love you, Hassan. Yet. Is there worldwide oppression of the French that I was unfamiliar with? If Biden makes a racist joke, you protect him, dude, come on. No, the fuck I don't. I shit on Biden all the time. Also, I don't give a fuck about Biden's racist this jokes more than I give a shit about what Biden has done, which is infinitely worse than making a racist joke. And he's a good kid, but he's a strong kid, but he's a kid. His and name he is so, Hassan. So they said, uh, Five months of getting Dr. Donor Sean, Wolf. he's great. He's fantastic. White House physician. And... He said, Barron tested positive. I said, for what? He said, for COVID. You know, there's like 30 different names. I happen to call it the China plague or the China virus. Because it's more... Sick! It's, it's more accurate, right? 
And like, you know, about 14 minutes later, I said, how's Baron doing? Oh, he's recovered fully. I said, Baron, were you feeling bad? I didn't know anything, Dad. I didn't. What was wrong, Dad? No, they, you know, they have a very strong... By the way, speaking of that, get back to school. Get back to school, okay? Get back to school, right? Look at Ron saying agrees. What about you calling Seniors Obama will Obabe be is on? Yeah. That's literally me making fun of the racist morons that do exactly that to Kamala. Whenever I say, oh, Bobby, I'm directly making fun of idiots like this. Bardock, no bummer. For like eight oh, fucking years, big, they just couldn't say the president's man. name right. Like, Love get the fuck out of here. Thanks for the leftism. Y'all are too sensitive. We can't even meme about this shit. Goddamn. What do you mean? I meme about it all the fucking time. What about us calling you Azan? No, that's entirely different because it comes from a loving place. And I clearly don't have a problem with it. Okay? There isn't like a, like a birtherism conspiracy around me after I was the president for eight years. It's not comparable in the, in the least bit. That was like purely backed by uh, racist sentiment. Not even close. <laughs> all right. But next year will be the greatest economic year in the history of our country. Joe Biden's plan will delay the vaccine, postpone therapies, crash the economy, and lock down the entire country. He doesn't mind locking down the country. The country could not stand it. You know, we locked it down shortly. We did it. We figured His it out. We protect Hassan. our elderly people, etc. But he thinks it's fine. He loves that whole deal. I, I'll tell you, all he talks about is COVID. He gets up today, he's talking, COVID, 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 COVID. His COVID. name is Hassan. And the truth is, we have done an incredible job with our ventilators. Where is this idiot? The Hold therapy. on. You were fine with Borat doing that super racist Asian shit? Yeah. That's funny. His name that's is That's actually Hassan. funny. You want to know His why that's fucking right. funny? Because of how fucking racist and idiotic it is. That's the whole point. That like a sitting fucking politician could like go around and be like, Oh, Ching Chong, oh, Chinatown, like Shanghai this virus or whatever the fuck. Like pervert. that's from truth the idiocy is what's call. funny there. Okay. That's the hilarity. But like, it's so fucking insane. It's so insanely fucking racist that like, that like someone could, um, that someone could come out and say that it wasn't Borat that was saying that. By the way, or it wasn't Sasha Baron Cohen that was saying that. It was the fucking guy who literally had to, who had to resign because he just also screamed the N word. Yo, what the fuck? By the way, the guy was also screaming the N word. Seems a little bit like your priorities are hyper focused on on one aspect of oppression there, R rather. Wait, are you saying that making fun of bigoted ideas isn't the same thing as having those bigoted ideas? Unsubscribed. Yeah. Oh, you're such a big man, Hassan. God, and where did I say the N word was fine? You didn't. You just, you just tried to fucking woke scold, okay? You just tried to woke scold and be like, and and express an attitude that you think I have, which is anti-Asian sentiment, or at least alluded to it, and you fucking failed. And now I'm calling you out for hyper focusing on a comedic scene that's supposed to heighten how fucking racist someone is and laughing at it, but because you're a fucking your butt hurt when you probably yourself laugh when other races are fucking laughed at or other races Hassan. are fucking attacked in a by racist people but in a hilarious fashion happen. but because i assume your background is asian you're like oh my god i can't believe you laughed at that shit again to oh, allude that i have some sort of like anti-asian attitude Hugging. or sentiment six months ago now if i said let's cut the testing down in half You'd have I love the system. The I can now remove the tinfoil hat. 
But you know what? It's good you, because we know if exists. there's a problem, it's yeah. etc. We know I'm, I'm Mr. Cynophobe, as you know. That's exactly what it points. is. I mean, I but what we do and what we've smart. done so well are the therapies. And His you think of it, the fatality rate is down really 85% and more now. has a really one of the few good voices in politics. But they talk about cases because, you know, when you hear 3% of the emergency rooms are devoted, you know, it's supposed to be 100% and the hospitals are going to close. They don't know what's going on. It's, it's been amazing what we've been able to do. But you don't hear them talking about death. You hear them talking about, because as a percentage, what we've done compared to other countries is incredible. And now, especially with the explosion that you see taking place over in Europe, so we've done a great job, and I'll tell you what, our vice president's been fantastic. And you compare, you compare vice presidents, and if you don't mind, I'll take the one we have, okay? <laughs> you talk about a victory at a debate. That was one of the greatest victories at a debate I've ever seen. That one wasn't even close. Our excess mortality rate is 42% lower than Europe. Think of that, where cases are now surging despite very powerful lockdowns that they've been but they've had very powerful lockdowns. thank you cal draft but don't take my months. word for it i want to just show you something on a screen i got people in here that have been fucking subscribing for 20 months that's crazy dude fight against the china virus and a couple of other quick things again we only do this for extremely important states and people go ahead the fact is, every time I've uh, called the president, he's quickly gotten on the line. When we asked Andy to get time. support for that mercy ship in Southern California, he was able to direct that in real time. What the federal government did, working with states, was a phenomenal 24 months! Got 2, of Two years of bagel and coffee. Sites uh, that are up, almost all operational now in the state. His uh, name because of his support. Hassan. Those are the facts. Uh, uh, his team has been on it. I know a team when they're on it, and I know a team when they're not on it. His team is on it. They've been responsive late at His night, early in the morning. Hassan. We are working very well with FEMA Region 2 and with the Army Corps of Engineers, building four field hospitals. Uh, that was a decision the president himself took, and I'm grateful for it. These were just oh, extraordinary man, efforts God. and acts oh, of mobilization. And uh, the federal government stepped up uh we needed help and they were there he said everything uh that i could have hoped for uh and we why aren't they showing the screen uh and every single thing he said they followed through on we've got to have double the this number of ventilators range. that we requested for that area Santa of the state and in fact uh we got and them in frankly short order have we lost anyone because we didn't have a bed or we didn't have a ventilator or we didn't have Healthcare staff. No. The president was extending support for new swabs. So, uh, conversation, commitment, uh, promise made, promise kept. Oh, you're such a man. Man. Hello, Mr. Springer. Please change scenes. We can't see the video. My problem is I voted for NAFTA. I'm supporting NAFTA because I think it is a positive thing to do. And I do not pretend to be an expert on. Uh, international trade matters trade agreements like nafta and permanent normal trade relations with china which forced american right. workers to compete against people who are making pennies and hour has resulted in the loss of 160,000 jobs the president is absolutely right when he says that china has been cheating for 25 years and that bill clinton didn't, didn't do enough about it george w bush didn't do enough about it barack obama didn't do enough about it. the rising china is an incredibly positive development for not only china with the United States and the rest of the world. Rising China is a positive, positive development. It is in our self-interest that China continue to prosper. We want to see China rise. China is a great nation, and we should hope for the... Like, what's expansion. the argument here that, like... His name is Hassan. Like, what, is, are they supposed to be saying, like... <laughs> Like, are, are, is that what we're doing now? Like, our goal is to be like, no, 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 you don't understand, like, fuck China. But it's okay when he talks about having, like, uh, better relations with Russia. I, I don't get it. Like, I, I don't understand why this is a talking point. I just, I hate how fucking anti-China America is. I really do. I think it's going to be a massive problem.
in like more problematic than any any number of different issues that we have as far as our foreign policy i think the overwhelming anti-chinese sentiment in the united states is bad for all asians His living on u.s soil Hassan. all asian people worldwide because of course uh the western world notoriously cannot fucking um uh, figure out who's chinese and who's japanese or or uh, any number of different asian but i don't understand why like he correctly says we should have better relations with russia we should have better relationships with like everyone around the world but then it's like joe biden is not anti-china enough That was terrifying. What kind of country we're going to be? Four more years of George, uh, George, uh, he uh, is going to find ourselves in a position where, if uh, Trump gets elected, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be in a different world. <laughs> All right, I'm going to run a 60 second ad break. Of course, top of the hour, every hour, 60 second ad break. If you would like to. If you'd like to avoid the ad, you already know what the fuck to do. Ladies and gentlemen, if you no longer want to see the ads, of course, uh, you can subscribe. You can do it for free with your Twitch Primer for $5 of the regular tier one sub. Every moment that you don't use your Twitch Prime, ladies and gents, is a moment that you're wasting. His name is Hassan. <laughs> So we're joined today with some really great people, and a man that's right at the top of that list for me is Senator Ron Johnson. I'm telling you, you're lucky you have him. He's a fantastic man, and he's done an incredible job, and he's got a lot of courage, too. And uh, in Washington, he's respected by everybody. Also, Congressman Glenn Grothman. Glenn. Good, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. And Mike Gallagher. Mike. Thanks, Mike. Great job. Great guys. And somebody that's done a really good job for us, GOP Chairman Andrew Hitt. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. How are we doing, Andrew? Because uh, we don't, we're not going to fire you so damn fast. You'll be out of here, Andrew. No, I think we're doing great, yeah. I think we're doing great. I also want to thank a legendary champion and a Green Bay Packer personified Hall of Famer Brett Favre for his endorsement. Oh, you know, I got, he's a tough guy. He's great. But uh, two days ago, I saw that he endorsed me, and I just want to thank him. He's a hell of a champion. He's a great champion. I look at some of his records. You don't even realize it, but... When you look at his uh, passing yards and Hassan. touchdowns, and one thing about him, tough as hell and great and really talented. So I want to thank Brett Favre. Thank you very much. Yo, fuck Brett Favre, dude. For decades, our politicians spent trillions of dollars rebuilding foreign nations. Now we are Washed rebuilding, Andy. if it's okay with you. Listen, motherfucker, CT is devastating, okay? Okay? CT is devastating, don't you know? Hassan. Maybe Brett got hit in the head maybe too many times, don't you know? All right? Who knows? I only ran because of them. I said that during the debate, too. I said, Joe, His I never thought of this. Hassan. I ran because of you people. Because you did such a bad job. He had no response to that. <laughs> With the USMCA, our dairy exports to Canada are expected to surge by more than 100%, okay? Just went into effect. And we're not going to be losing our companies to Mexico and Canada. We're not going to have our companies close up and get rid of everybody, fire His everybody, and move and do the same product in Mexico. You saw that for, it's probably the number one reason I ran. I couldn't stand watching it. And it's going to be, now they're going to pay a tremendous economic this price if they do that. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden is a corrupt politician. They took millions of dollars from the Chinese Communist Party. Well, Vice President Biden ship your jobs to His China. Name is How the hell can he negotiate with China with the money they take? And the news, they don't want to cover it. The fake media, the lamestream media and the 
and the companies, right? These wonderful this companies that Perfect. obviously don't love our country. It's suppression. They don't want to cover it. If Biden wins, China wins. His son walks in and takes out one and a half billion dollars to manage, billions of dollars a year. This is a they walk in, where's Hunter? Perfect. He wants to know where's. I think one problem that we have when we're doing this sort of coverage is that we exclusively focus on like Trump's rhetoric oh, you're such a bitch. as it pertains Man, to the son. current election cycle. This is like the short-sighted nature of the uh, ADHD media cycle, okay? So we look at the Hunter Biden misinfo and we say, oh, oh whatever, like it's not working, Man, it's not working. Son. But what we fail to comprehend is just like previous disinformation cycles and uh, you know, echo chambers on the internet and little rabbit oh, holes on the man. algorithm man, created an opportunity ripe for QAnon weirdos to take over. This kind of mentality is going to probably define... Oh, big man. Actually, I don't know if it'll define, Thanks, but like, it, it will probably guide a lot of the Republican rhetoric and therefore the Democratic Party's attitudes against China because... Democrats are gigantic this pussies who do nothing but cover. concede to the Republicans because they are the ones that uh, they are the ones at the forefront of policy. They are the ones who guide America's foreign policy. They are the ones that guide America's domestic policy when it comes to economic oh, issues. Man, so Hassan. I'm truly fearful that this is going to uh, this is going to lead to really, really just uh, horrific consequences. <laughs> His name is Hassan. Miles of wall. And we'll soon be finished. They don't talk about the wall anymore. They don't talk. They used to kill me. I'd go through. Hassan. We'd fight them and we'd close up and we'd do all sorts of things and they would go after me. Once the wall started or once they saw we had all that money lined up to get it done, and the impact it's had is incredible. Wet it's not completed yet, but it will be very soon. And I built it exactly as Border Patrol and ICE wanted it. Exactly. I said, what about concrete plank? They said, sir, that's no good. Have to see through. Oh, you're well, such a big how about this man, and how about that? Old, I know it all. That's what I like. They said, sir, we want steel. We then want concrete inside the steel, and then we'd like rebar. I said, can you think of a more expensive way, maybe? Whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. But we gave There's it, and then we want on top an anti-climb, you know, the thing on top. I said, why are we doing that? That's very expensive. The piece of steel on top. It's four feet deep. They said, sir, that's called anti-climb. It's harder to climb. I mean, I house. gave them everything. Now they have it. no excuse. I don't want to have any excuses. And our record, our numbers on the border are phenomenal. The best we've ever had. Joe Biden has pledged to open borders, nice. mass oh. amnesty, nationwide catch and release. You know what that is? That's when you catch a criminal, murderer, rapist. You let the criminal go. We argued about this during the debate. He said they all come His back to Trump. No, they don't come Hassan. back to Trump. Since Nixon. Only the ones I said with very low IQs come back. You have a trial in two and a half years for murder. He's doing it again. You have to He's just back. doing he it now. He's just running that all the time. It. His name is Hassan. You think that was easy? Hassan. It's not easy doing this stuff. It looks easy, but it's not. Sanctuary cities from coast to coast. They want to have sanctuary cities all over the place. And free health care for illegal aliens, which will this bankrupt your Medicare and your Social Security. You will not have Social Security if you do that or Medicare. We all have a big heart. I do. I want to take care of everybody. Problem is, you have millions of people pouring in from all over the world. His name is Hassan. As your president, I will protect your borders, I will protect your families, and I will always protect your Medicare and your Social Security. And I've always said it. Biden and Bernie Sanders. Crazy Bernie. One of the greatest losers of all time. This guy. No, but I meant that in a nice way. He lost, and he went back to the Senate and voted radical left. His name he lost is again. Hassan. I mean, Elizabeth Pocahontas, Warren. All she had to do is get out a couple of days early. He would have won every one of those states, but she decided not to do that. I don't think she likes Bernie, okay? This is a deranged... But Biden will increase refugees. This was content. agreed with Bernie you, and the group, and Asshole. AOC plus three, right? Highly educated person on the environment, AOC. Have you ever taken a class on the environment? Oh, I don't think so. Man, Increase refugees by 700 percent 
from terror hotspots. Hot now, think of that. A 700. This was agreed to. I don't think Bernie was that bad. I think actually Bernie went further left Hassan. after they made the deal. And I'm keeping radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country, okay? If it's okay with you. Look at what's gone on in France over the last four days. What, what's happened in France? We invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military, including nearly $6 billion to save the historic shipyard Marinette Marine. His name is Hassan. And even more money for combat vehicle manufacturing in Oshkosh. You know, uh, Marinette's doing a great job. I went to Marinette four or five months ago, looked at what they were doing, and we gave the contract to them which cost me a lot of states, but that's okay. But we gave that to uh, Marinette. They do a great job. They do a great job. They were ready to close. A $6 billion this contract, and it's going to be extended. Perfect. They make the most beautiful ship. You have to see it. looks like a super yacht, except it's got weapons all over it. You know? I would say paint it gleaming white and call it a yacht, a but the weapons sort of man, throw you off a little bit. You, Got yeah, more guns and things than that. I've never seen anything like it. Anyway, but they're fantastic. Biden will close the shipyard down. He would close it down. He will cut your military oh, spending. We need man, it. And also, son. it's all made in the USA. It's jobs. It's great. It's best stuff. And you know what? Two and a half trillion dollars. We're the envy of the world. We're the envy of Russia Excuse and China. Me. Nobody I'm has sorry. the equipment that we have. Control. Nobody. I apologize for that. Stealth fighter Another jets, one. F-35s. Can't see them. Tanks, we have tanks, we have submarines, we have everything. What we've done, and nuclear, we've upgraded our nuclear, we have new nuclear. Pervert. And all you do is one thing, you pray that we never have to use it, okay? That's the big thing. But having it and having it in tippy-top condition is the best tippy way top. that we will never, ever have to use it. Oh, you're such a big it's the best way. The last administration's cruel VA policies resulted in deadly Waitlist. Under Biden and Obama, 300,000 veterans oh, died on a waiting list. Man, Hassan. To Not fix this travesty, we passed enough. Veterans' Choice and VA accountability. Accountability for firing bad people that don't love our vets and take care of our vets. This which you could not do room. under any That's circumstances. Santa Barbara, Fub, has Civil the all -time service, NFL unions, whatever. And now you can do it. Jim, you're not treating our vets right. Get the hell out of here. Get fired. Okay, go. This is a deranged pervert. Sad election right. day, either way, is sad. And we took care of Now our vets, instead of waiting for weeks sometimes to see a doctor, it was under a Obama. Doctor, we pay the bill. But, you know. And it's actually this is a on, it's, le it's probably pervert. less expensive. It's probably less I won't even get into the underlying problems with VA choice because it's too long, but it was under Obama regardless. But VA choice was created by, excuse me, it is, it is technically a right-wing concept. The reason why VA choice is ultimately a bad thing is because the VA is underfunded significantly. What the VA should have done, what the Democrats should have done, is beef up funds to the VA that has a massive pool of people that need people that need health care no matter what at the lowest entry point most veterans still need health care okay they're in the highest they're in the highest level of need and it's an ever-growing pool of people that have injuries people that are sick people that need health care right but what did republicans do instead of adding more money into the va and funding uh, instead of funding the VA, they they pushed for VA choice, which His then allows people to go out and, and get uh, treatment wherever they want. So it's inherently still a free market policy. It's like a pro-free market policy. The underlying consequences of that, of course, Hassan. the underlying consequences of that is that in the long term, they can still say the veterans, uh, the VA just still sucks. It still doesn't work. That's why socialism fails. That's why social, uh, you know, me. that's why it, it's just not I'm working. We need to privatize it in its entirety, which will ultimately leave to, today. Love you, which will ultimately lead to like Donald horrific Trump. care for veterans, like even worse care for veterans. Because VA His care is, is good if you Sean. can get it. If you're lucky or very unlucky. To do it for decades and decades. 
I've done more in 47 months than Joe Biden has done in 47 years. A vote for Republicans is a vote for the American dream. And remember, the Republican Party is the party of the late, great Abraham Lincoln.